Isaiah 64 and 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by air, neither have the eye seen. O God, O power, besides thee, what he have prepared for him that waited for him. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Waha Rekakwadash, double honest of my apostles and elders at Great Millstone, the men that taught me this truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings to you, brothers, as teaching this word and truth and sincerity, and peace and blessings to the rest of the elect of the house of Israel that scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. The name of this lesson slash discourse is our blessing is greater than the wicked's blessing, than the blessing of the wicked, or our blessing, Israel's blessing is greater than Esau's blessing. And um, I was watching a brother's video. Um, actually, the elder brother Karab, GMS rebuke at the gates, and I, he was going into, you know. You know, basically, this world ain't shit. This world is corrupt. This world is tangible. It's here for one moment and it's going the next. And our kingdom is going to be an everlasting kingdom. And um, he ended it off with this scripture. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, no ears heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men. The things which the power have prepared for them that love him. And that sparked my spirit because the kingdom of heaven is going to be everlasting life, everlasting peace, everlasting joy. There's going to be no more sorrow. It's going to be no more plagues or torments or battling spirits or even transgressing the laws of the heavenly father. We're going to be united in sync with Yahweh, the Heavenly Father and His Son, in the world to come. Compared to the world that we live in now, which is the world of the wicked, where wickedness is upheld, folly is set in great dignity, okay? And when you look up the word folly, it means foolishness. Abominations is held in great dignity. Homosexuality, LGBT, and the list goes on. Worshiping other gods, adultery, idolatry, and the list goes on. That's upheld in the society. All right? This is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor. So, don't be jealous over the oppressor. Who is the oppressor? Esau, Edom, the so-called Caucasian race. Okay, their true biblical identity is Esau or Edomites. Because they lack pigmentation. They lack melanin. Their blood shows forth through their skin. That's why the Heavenly Father named them Edom, which means red. Okay? So the scripture says, Envy not thou the oppressor. Who's the oppressor? Esau, Edom. They're the oppressors of the planet Earth. That's why the scriptures say, um, when, the righteous are the, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear of rule, the people mourn. The world is in a state of mourning. That's why there's so much protests, riots, sedition, uproars of the people. So much division amongst the people. Because the wicked bear of rule, the oppressors bear of rule. And the scriptures told us to envy not the oppressor. Why? Because the things of the oppressor is going to be destroyed. Remember, the Heavenly Father said, Esau have I, I mean, Jacob, a man slipped with the tongue, but not with the heart. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. 
Okay. And he said he's going to lay his habitations waste. So you got Jake out here, which is not the room with having your own. There's nothing wrong with, you know, strapping up your boots and doing what you got to do for self and your and your family. But at the end of the day, all that means nothing if we don't have Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Bashem. Because going back, we had our own land. We had our own land. We had our own villages. We had our own tribes. We had our own customs. We had our own traditions. We had our own government. We had our own system. We had all of that. But guess what happened? Guess guess what was the common denominator? Guess why we lost all of that? Because we was going after the way of the heathen and we wasn't seeking after the Lord. We didn't put the Lord above all the things that we had or didn't have. So Jake, today, you fighting for these things, but guess what? If you ain't got the Lord, you still gonna be suffering under them curses, man. And we're gonna be suffering under those curses until our Lord and Savior returns. And the scriptures say, and choose none of his ways. For the froid, it's an abomination to the Yahweh, but his secrets is with the righteous. Then what's the secrets of the Most High? What's the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven? That the Lord has an elect. The Lord has a remnant. The Lord gave this message, this good news, this understanding to, the elect, to an elect few. And he's only coming back to save that elect few. All right. The ones that are forsaken the things of this world. The ones that seek after him daily. The ones that call after his name. Rehearse his righteous acts. Believe upon his son. Those are the ones that the Most High is going to reveal his secret onto. Now, going back to the topic, Israel, blessed is greater than uh, Esau's. This is Genesis chapter 27, verse 27. And he came near and kissed him. This is talking about Jacob and his father Isaac. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore, the Most High give thee the dew of the heaven. Dew is that residue of wetness that's on your grass. When you wake up early in the morning, you feel your grass and it's wet and it's soaked. That's what you call dew. So it says the Most High give thee the dew of heaven. Meaning, we're going to have um, great uh, fertilization. We're going to have great, um, um, not, not to say great, yeah, we're going to have dew, meaning our crops is going to be well f um, flourished, okay? And the fatness of the earth, the fatness of the earth is everything that the earth produces, all the natural resources. This is the blessing that Isaac gave unto Jacob. And plenty of corn and wine. Corn representing crops. Such as wheat. Such as. Matter of fact, let me. Um, I believe I searched up these words. Okay, it says dew is the water in the form of droplets that appear on thin exposed objects in the morning or evening 
due to condensation. So the, the Heavenly Father says he's going to give us the dew of heaven. That's the water droplets that you see on plants. All right. Moisture condensed upon the surface of cool bodies, especially at night. With wet morning dew, something resembling dew, impurity, freshness, or the power of refresh. So that's what the earth is going to bless us with. Okay? Let's see what this is. Okay, this is the word for fatness. And it says, Masham. Masham. That's a ma, that's a sha, that's a ma. And that's the ending character, na. Masham. Or Mashaman. It says, fatness, fat piece, fertile place, richly prepared food. Fat, fatness, fat pieces, are oil, olive oil. Stout, vigorous, fertile spot in places. All right. So the fatness represents all the things that the earth has to offer. All right. Plenty of corn, meaning crops, and plenty of wine, which is made from plants, herbs. All right. It says, let people serve thee. This is a blessing that Jacob have received. And who is the people that's going to serve us is the other nations. And nations bow down to thee. This is the blessings that Isaac gave to Jacob, which later his name came Israel, which became the progenitor or the father of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay, so nations are going to bow down to us. Be Lord over thy brethren. Who is Jacob's brother? Esau. So the Caucasian race is going to be under our subjection. Let me see. I think about, I looked up that word as well. That's cool. This is the word for Lord. It says, Gabar Yar. Gabar Yar. The first character is a Ga. Second character is a Ba. Third character is a Ya. Last character of Ra. Strong's H, 1376. Gabar Yar. It says, Lord or ruler. So when it says, be Lord. It says, meaning being a ruler over thy brethren. And once again, who is the brethren to Jacob? Esau. Who is Esau? He is the progenitor or the father to the Caucasian race. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. So this is more implication that not only people, meaning nations, but Esau, Jacob's twin brother, different nation, will bow down to thee. Curse be everyone that curseth thee, and bless be he that blesseth thee. So a part of our blessing is anyone that wishes harm or foul play or malice towards us, they will receive that malice or foul play or harm, they will receive that curse. And blessed be those who bless us. The people that do good by us will receive good. That is a part of our blessing. And it says, And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, Jacob was yet scared going out of the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from hunting. And he came, and he also had made savory meat and brought it on to his father. 
and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? <laughs> Where is he that have taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten all of it before thou camest. And he blessed him, yea, and he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great exceeding bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me even also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtility, and have taken away thy blessing, because Jacob, coming from the Hebrew word Yaikwab, which means supplanter, all right? Like basically a con on it, someone that can talk you out of or uh, manipulate you out of something or into something. And it says, he said, it is not he rightly named Jacob, Yaikwab, which means supplanter, for he have supplanted me two times. He took away my birthright, which you sold your birthright for a red pottage. <coughs> Going back to Genesis, the 25th chapter, when you were starving to death and you sold your birthright. And behold, now he has now he has taken away my blessing. And he said, has thou not reserved the blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy lord, thy ruler, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now to thee, my son? Like, what, there's nothing else I can give you, man. I gave Jacob everything. I gave Jacob the greater blessing. There's nothing more I can do for you. And Esau said to his father, Has thou but one blessing for my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. He was crying. He was bemoaning. He was he was grieving, man. Because, like, how am I the firstborn child? I'm, the, I'm supposed to be the inheritor of the family. And I ain't got nothing. <laughs> I'm not inheriting nothing. So he was he was vexed, man. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dweller shall be the fatness of the earth, all right, and of the dew of heaven from above. So he was going to have, just like Jacob, he was going to have a, 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 a time of Esau's lifespan. He was going to get the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven. He was going to have the earth, all right? Like the scriptures say, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. The wicked is Esau, Edom, which is the Caucasian race. And by thy sword, and this is how we know who Esau is today, by this prophecy, and by thy sword thou shalt live. Because how, how does the Caucasian man live? Shoot first, ask questions later. All right? Hold himself not guilty, though he's uh, 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 committed the crime, and he he's known for being guilty, but he still will hold himself not guilty. And it says, and shall serve thy brother. So even though his blessing is the sword, even though he would have the earth for a certain time period, he still got to serve his brother which is Jacob, which is the progenitor of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion, when thou shalt rule the earth, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So there's going to come a time period that Esau is going to be freed from Jacob, which is the time period we're living in now. All right? And Esau hated Jacob, his brother, of the blessings wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father is at hand. Then 
will I slay my brother Jacob, going back all the way to the womb when we was first being born. They was warring against each other. So from the beginning of time, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians was warring with the Caucasian race. All right? But pretty much that's it, man. Matter of fact, I want to get this last scripture because it goes into the topic that our blessing is going to be greater than theirs because look at Esau's world. He got everything, right? And look what he's doing. He, everything that Esau creates does some type of harm or bodily harm or harm to the planet Earth or harm to God's creations. But in the kingdom of heaven, everything is going to be useful. It's going to have synergy. There's going to be a whole ecosystem. Everything is going to be beneficial towards the most High's creations. All right? So this is Tobit chapter 13, verse 14. Because they try to make America as if this is a land of great opportunity, the land of freedom, the land of hope. But this is the land of our captivity. This is the house of bondage because this is spiritual Egypt. Everything is an illusion and deception is a false reality. That's why they call this place the matrix because everything that appears to be joy, happiness, and, and, and prosperity, you have to do something wicked or abominable to... To have access to it. The higher you get in society, the more wicked you have to be. But that's not going to be so in the kingdom of the Most High. Tobit 13 to 14. O oh, blessed are they which love thee, for they shall rejoice in thy peace. Blessed are they which have been sorrowful for all thy scourges, for they shall rejoice for thee. When they have seen all thy glory, it shall be glad forever. Let my soul bless the Most High, the Great King. For Jerusalem shall be built up with sapphires and emeralds and precious stones. Thy walls and thy towers and battlements with pure gold. America has no gold. The streets ain't paved with gold. The buildings ain't paved with gold. It ain't paved with precious stones. Everything here is corrupt. Everything here is degenerate. All right? It says, And the streets of Jerusalem shall be paved with beryl and carbuncle and stones of Ophir. And all her streets shall say, Aloya. And they shall praise him, saying, Blessed be the Most High which extolled it forever. And that's what we're looking forward to. The precious promises of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, where we're going to give all praises, honor, and glory. We're going to give hallelujah. Hallelujah, man. To Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. For everything. There's nothing to be happy for in this world, in this society. Bad relationship with your family, bad, uh, uh, bad, uh, where you work at is hell, it's oppression, it's depressing. Everything about this place is depressing or oppressing. Your wife is a harlot. Your kids is rebellious. Your family members are drug addicts or alcoholics. And the list goes on, man. But none of that's going to be so in the kingdom of heaven because all Israel is going to be righteous. <coughs> Everything is going to be turned right side up in the kingdom of heaven. 
as in this place, everything is upside down. Everything is backwards. Everything is adverse to the Most High, His Son, and His words, and the Lord's statutes and commandments. Well, pretty much that's it, man. I pray and hope that you was edified. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shah, Waha, Rakakwadash, for giving me the spirit for doing this lesson. Till next time, I say Shalom. Leave your comments through your responses. Shalom.